بسم الله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أما بعد قال الشيخ الإسلام محمد بن عبد الوهاب on page number 45 وعن حسين بن عبد الرحمن قال كنت عند سعيد بن جبير فقال أيكم رأى الكوكب الذي قضى البارحة فقلت أنا ثم قلت أما إني لم أكن في صلاة ولكني رجل قال فما صنع قلت التقيت قال فما حملك على ذلك قلت حديث حدثناه الشعب قال وما حدثكم قلت حدثنا عن بريدة بن الحصي أنه قال لا رؤية إلا من عين أو حمى حسين بن عبد الرحمن ناويد once when I was with Saeed in Jubayr, he asked, who from you saw the shooting star last night? I answered, I saw it. And then explained that I was not in prayer at the time, rather I had been stung by a poisonous scorpion. He said, what did you do then? I replied, I used rupiah to cure. He said, what compelled you to do that? I said, a narration I heard from a shabi. He asked, what did a shabi narrate? I replied, he reported from the Buraida ibn Husayn who said that Rubiah is not allowed except for the treatment of evil eye and poisonous things. Page number 46. Qala sami' walakin haddathna walakin haddathna ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma an nabihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam annahu qal uridat alayya al-umam faraitu al-nabiyya wa ma'ahu ruh والنبي ومعه الرجل ورجلان والنبي وليس معه أحد إذ رفع لي سواد عظيم فظننت أنهم أمتي فقيل لهذه فقيل لهذا موسى وقومه فنظرت فإذا سواد عظيم فقيل لي هذه أمتك ومعهم سبعون ألفا يدخلون الجنة بغير حساب ولا عذاب. He said in Jubayr said he has done well by stopping on what he has heard. I eat to act according to the knowledge as opposed to ignorance. However, Ibn Abbas narrated to us that the Prophet said, All the nations were made to pass before me, and I saw a prophet with a small group with him, and a prophet with two or three people, and a prophet with none. Then there appeared a large group of people, which I took to be my nation, my ummah. But I was told that they were Musa and his people. Later, a larger group appeared, and I was told that they were my people. Amongst, the, amongst them were 70,000 who would enter into paradise without reckoning, without reckoning or punishing. Page number 47. <laughs> the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then got up and went into his house and the people went into a discussion as to who they might be. Some said perhaps they are the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Others said maybe they are those who are born into Islam and therefore never ascribe parties with Allah. Whilst they were exchanging their views, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out and was informed about the discussion. He said, there are those who do not request others to perform ruqya on them, nor do they believe in omens, or do they cauterize themselves, but rather they put their trust in their Lord. On that, Ukasha ibn Mihsan rose and said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, invoke Allah to make me one of them. He, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, you are one of them. Then another man got up and said, invoke Allah to make me one of them. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Ukasha has perceived you. الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى واشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد 
Continuing with Kitab al-Tawheed We've reached chapter Man haqqaq al-Tawheed Dakhal al-Jannata bi ghayri hisab Whoever perfects Tawheed Will enter paradise without any reckoning Whoever perfects Tawheed Will enter paradise without any reckoning And in the previous lesson we discussed The two verses that were quoted by Shaykh al-Islam al-Mujaddid Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah as a proof in this chapter what was the first verse? who can tell me? Tafaddal Nasir al-Din al-Sual Naam, aindak yani ahsana lakin tafaddal Ahsant, naam. The first ayah was the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, Inna Ibrahima kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifa wa lam yakum minal mushrikeen. Indeed, Ibrahim was an ummah, a leader, a nation in and of himself, devout to Allah, obedient to Allah, pure in his belief of a tawheed, turning away from a shirk, and he was not from the mushrikeen. We discussed this in the previous lesson and likewise the second verse. Today we start this beautiful hadith. This beautiful hadith that is muttafaqan alayh, that is found in Al-Bukhari, a Muslim. And the wording that we find in this book is the wording of Alima Muslim. And with regards to the story prior to the hadith, this is only found in the Sahih of Alima Muslim. Naam. So Shaykh al-Islam al-Mujaddin Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah, he said, وعن حسين بن عبد الرحمن قال حسين بن عبد الرحمن he said قال كنت عند السعيد بن جبير فقال أيكم رأى الكوكب الذي قضى البارحة سعيد بن جبير he said who from amongst you saw the shooting star last night فقلت أنا so I said me ثُمَّ قُلْتُ أَمَا إِنِّي لَمْ أَكُمْ فِي صَلَاةٍ وَلَكِنِّي لُدِغْتِ However, I was not praying. I was stung by a scorpion. قال سعيد بن جبير He asked him فَمَا سَنَعَتْ What did you do? قُلْتُ إِرْتَقَيْتْ And this wording, إخوان إِرْتَقَيْتْ If we return to Sahih Muslim That which we find is إِسْتَرْقَيْتْ so I asked someone to perform ruqya upon me. So Sa'id he said, فَمَا حَمَلَكَ عَلَى ذَلِكْ What caused you to do this? قُلْتُ I replied, Hadith حَدَّثَنَهُ الشَّعْبِي Based upon a hadith that was narrated to us by a shabi. قال وَمَا حَدَّثَكُمْ Sa'id said, What did the shabi narrate to you? قال قُلْتُ حدثنا عن بريدة بن الحسيب. He narrated to us from بريدة بن الحسيب, the companion رضي الله عنه that he said أنه قال لا رقية إلا من عين وحما. There is no رقية except from the evil eye or a poisonous sting. سعيد بن جبير he said قد أحسن من انتهى إلى ما سمع. The one who implements what he has heard has surely done well. ولكن حدثنا ابن عباس عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. But Ibn Abbas narrated to us from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said عرضت علي الأمم the nations were displayed before me فرأيت النبي ومعه الرح and I saw a prophet and he had a small group of people with him. One Nabi wa ma'ahu rajul wa rajulan. And I saw a prophet and he had with him one or two men. One Nabi wa laysa ma'ahu ahad. And I saw a prophet, he did not have anyone with him. Subhanallah. I saw a prophet, 
He didn't have anyone with him. إِذْ رُفِعَ لِي سَوَادٌ عَظِيمٌ فَظَنَنْتُ أَنَّهُمْ أُمَّتِي The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Then a great nation appeared before me. A great number of people appeared before me. And I thought that that was my nation. فَقِيلَ لِي was said to me, هَذَا مُوسَى وَقَوْمُهُ This is Musa and his people. فَنَظَرْتُ فَإِذَا سَوَادٌ عَظِيمٌ فَقِيلَ لِي هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكَ وَمَعَهُمْ سَبْعُونَ أَلْفًا يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابُ وَلَا عَدَابُ The Prophet ﷺ said, and then I looked again, and I saw a large number of people, and it was said to me, this is your nation, and with them are 70,000 people who will enter paradise without any reckoning and without any punishment. Look at that. They will enter paradise without any reckoning and any punishment. And remember, the goal of every believer is paradise. And these individuals, these individuals, they will enter paradise without any reckoning, without any punishment. The Prophet ﷺ stood up and then he went into his house. The people started to discuss amongst themselves, who are these 70,000 people? And we will mention the, the benefits of Juan later on. The companions started to discuss, who are these 70,000? Some of them said, فَلَعَلَّهُمَ الَّذِينَ صَحِبُوا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Perhaps they are those who accompanied the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Perhaps this is referring to the companions. Some of them said, وَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ فَلَعَلَّهُمَ الَّذِينَ وُلِدُوا فِي الْإِسْلَامِ فَلَمْ يُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا Perhaps there are those who are born in Islam and never associated any partners with Allah. وَذَكَرُوا أَشَّاهُ And they mention other things. فَخَرَجَ عَلَيْهِمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَأَخْبَرُوهُ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he went out. And he appeared before them and they told the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about their discussions. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, هُمَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَسْتَرْقُونَ وَلَا يَكْتَوُونَ وَلَا يَتَطَيَّرُونَ وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ He said, they are those who do not ask for ruqya to be performed upon them. They are those who do not cauterize their bodies. Those who do not believe in omens and they place their trust in Allah. They place their trust in their Lord. So again, the Prophet وسلم, he said, هُمَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَسْتَرْقُونَ They are those, they do not ask for ruqya to be performed upon them. As for the wording, هُمَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْقُونَ The word in لَا يَرْقُونَ شَاذَ ضَعِيفَ وَالشَّالْ مُخَالَفَةِ الْمَقْبُولِ مَنْ هُوَ أَوْلَى مِنْهِ As for the wording, they do not perform ruqya, that is weak. And we will see further, later on, why? There are those, they do not ask for ruqya to be performed upon them. They do not cauterize their bodies. They do not believe in omens. And they place their trust in their Lord. فَقَامَ عُكَّاشَةُ إِبْنُ مِحْسَنْ عُكَّاشَةُ The virtuous companion رضي الله عنه stood up and he said أُدْعُ اللَّهَ أَنْ يَجْعَلَنِي مِنْهُمْ Supplicate to Allah He said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم O Messenger of Allah Supplicate to Allah for Allah to make me from among them The Prophet said to him صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت منهم You are from them You are from them and this is one of the proofs of the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that he speak and that he spoke based upon revelation that was revealed to him, and that will become clearer later on when we explain this point. ثم قال رجل آخر another man stood up and he said أدعو الله أن يجعلني منهم. He said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ask Allah to make me from among them, meaning from those seventy thousand. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said سبقك بها عكاشة عكاشة beat you to it. 
Hukasha, he beat you to it. So explaining, brothers and sisters, this beautiful hadith. And as we said, the hadith itself is muttafaqun alayhi. Meaning collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Fi a'la darajati siha. And that is the highest level of authenticity. The qissa, the story behind it that we find in Muslim, in Faradabi Muslim. So Hussein ibn Abdurrahman, he said, Hussein ibn Abdurrahman, al-Sulami, ahadu tabi'in al-thiqad. One of the students of the companions who was trustworthy and precise. He said, I was in the presence of Sa'id ibn Jubair. Sa'id ibn Jubair again, min akabir tabi'in, from the senior students of the companions. In terms of his knowledge, his piety, and his understanding. Sa'id ibn Jubair was from the students of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. Qatalahu al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi. He was murdered and killed by that tyrant who was known as al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi. And Sa'id ibn Jubair he was killed before he reached 50 years of age. And as Shaykh al-Fawzani said, بِقَتْلِهِ أُصِيبَةِ الْأُمَّ بِفَقْدِ عَالِمٍ مِنْ أَجَلِّ عُلَمَائِهَا And with the killing of Sa'id ibn Jubair, this nation lost one of its scholars who was from the most elite of the scholars of this ummah. So Sa'id ibn Jubair, he said, أَيُّكُمْ رَأَى الْكَوْكَبَ الَّذِي قَضَّ الْبَارِحَةِ who from amongst you saw the shooting star last night? And Ikhwan, this discussion that they were having was after Duhr or after Asr. How do we know that? How do we know that this discussion they were having was after Duhr or Asr? Somebody's whispering, but I can't hear them. I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> I'll leave that for you, inshallah, to find out. Fadl. So Saeed ibn Jubair, he said, who from amongst you saw the shooting star last night? And again, Ikhwan, subhanAllah, the Salaf, they would reflect over the signs of Allah Azza wa They would reflect over these things. And that is why it is upon the Muslim that they reflect over the signs of Allah Azza wa That we reflect over the creation of Allah Azza wa That we do not walk around heedless. So Sa'id ibn Jubayr, said, who from amongst you saw the shooting star last night? And we know, Ikhwan, the blazing meteor or the shooting star, الشهاب الذي يرمى به الشياطين, it is that which the devils are pelted with, who attempt to steal news from the heavens. So Hussein ibn Abdurrahman, he said, فَقُلْتُ أَنَا I saw it. Then he said, ثم قلت, Then I said, أما إني لم أكن في صلاة ولكني لدقت. He said, but I was not praying. I was not praying. I was stung by a scorpion or something with a poisonous sting. And again, brothers and sisters, when he said this, I saw it. فدل على أن هذا الرجل لم ينام. That shows us that Hussein ibn Abd Rahman, he didn't sleep during the night. At that time, Ikhwan, when someone said at the time of the Salaf, they didn't sleep, it meant that they were praying. At that time, a Salaf al Salih, when someone said they didn't sleep, not like our time, somebody, say, somebody says to us, I didn't sleep last night. You may think that he was playing the PlayStation all night. Well, Billah. But at that time, when someone said, if somebody said, I didn't sleep during the night, it was assumed that they were praying. However, ثُمَّ إِنُّهُ خَشِيَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ He feared for himself showing off. So, فَاسْتَدْرَكَ وَقَالْ And he clarified the statement further. He said, أَمَا إِنِّي لَمْ أَكُمْ فِي صَلَةٍ But I wasn't praying. Clarifying. Subhanallah, ikhwan. Look at the piety of the Salaf. And this is an, a, a warning for us. 
في هذا التحذير لنا جميعا especially with social media some people they film themselves praying film, them, film themselves some people they film themselves making hajj making tawaf making dua do we not fear for ourselves Ria? worse than that some people they film themselves pretending to pray and they're not praying or some people they film themselves pretending to make dua Look at the salaf. I was not praying, but I was stung. So he clarified to them the reason why he was awake. Meaning, don't think, don't think I stayed awake because I was performing tahajjud. And he feared that he would be praised for something that he did not do. In our time, people pretend and they want to be praised for something they're not doing. Person not making dua, but they take a picture of themselves pretending to make dua. This religion is not a game. How can we play with the ibadah, worship to Allah Azza wa Jal? And this is an example of the piety of the Salaf. And how they distance themselves from showing off and praising themselves. Because this opposes sincerity. So he said, He said, but I was stung. So the reason why he was awake is because he was stung. So he witnessed the shooting star. So Sa'id ibn Jubayr asked him, Fama sana'at? What did you do when you were stung? Because what is customary, what is normal for the one that is stung by something is that they look for some type of treatment. So Saeed ibn Jubayr asked him, what did you do? فما سنعت. He said, ارتقيت. And as we said in Sahih Muslim, we find استرقيت. Meaning, I sought from someone to perform ruqya upon me. Talabtu man yarqini bil Quran. I look for someone to perform ruqya upon me with the Quran. And brothers and sisters, what is a ruqya? As Sheikh Al Fawzan he explains, and this is important, what is a ruqya? He said, a ruqya tu ma'anaha an yukra al musabi. بالمرض أو باللدغ من القرآن والأدعية وينفث على موضع الإصابة وموضع الألم الرقية is that Quran and prophetic supplications are read upon the one who has been afflicted by a sickness or afflicted with a poisonous sting or a sting and this is from the most beneficial of treatments, meaning ruqya. Ruqya that is legislated. So ruqya, brothers and sisters, a person who is Quran and prophetic supplications upon the one who has been afflicted by a sickness or the one who has been stung. And they blow upon the place that has been affected and the place that is causing pain. And the Sheikh said this is from the most beneficial forms of treatment. If this occurs with certainty of the one who is performing the ruqya, and certainty of the one that Rukya is performed upon. لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى أَنزَلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ شِفَاءً لِلْأَمْرَاضِ الْمَعْنَوِيَّةِ أَمْرَاضِ الشِّرْكِ وَالنِّفَاقِ وَالْمَعَاصِ وَالْأَمْرَاضِ الْحِسِّيَّةِ أَمْرَاضِ الْأَجْسَادِ لِأَنَّهُ كَلَامُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى 
This is because, brothers and sisters, Allah revealed the Quran as a cure. A cure for spiritual sickness. The diseases of shirk and hypocrisy and disobedience. And physical sicknesses. Like the diseases of the body. Because the Quran is the speech of Allah, the Lord of all of the creation. And Allah said, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدَ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا And we revealed the Quran as a cure and a mercy to the believers. فَالرُّقْيَ مَشْرُوعًا Ruqya is legislated. And it is that which is in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah. وَقَدْ رَقَى النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَرُقِيَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ رَقَاهُ جِبْرِيلُ لَمَّا أَصَابَهُ السِّحْرُ وَرَقَى صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ بَعْضَ أَصْحَابِهِ فَالرُقِيَةُ بِالْكِتَابِ وَلَأَدْعِيَةِ أَمْرٌ مَشْرُوعٌ الشيخ الفوزاني said Ruqya is legislated The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم performed Ruqya And Ruqya was performed upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Jibreel he performed ruqya upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was afflicted with magic. Likewise, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed ruqya upon some of his companions. So ruqya with the Quran and the prophetic supplications is something that is legislated. Is that clear to everybody? That's wadih, right? So we know what ruqya is. And it will be discussed in more detail, brothers and sisters, the ruqya that is allowed and that which is forbidden later on in this book. And that is why the wording of the hadith, wala yarqoon, and they do not perform ruqya, is weak. Because the Prophet ﷺ performed ruqya. So Sa'id ibn Jubayri asked, he said, فَمَا حَمَلَكَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ what led you to perform Ruqya? Or what led you to seek Ruqya? Again, look, brothers and sisters, asking for the Dalil. This is why أو على مشروعية من الكتاب والسنة سبحان الله look at this إخوان this is how we learn our religion so سعيد بن جبير he asked حسين بن عبد الرحمن what led you to make ruqya or seek ruqya what led you to seek ruqya he said نعم in that الشيخ الفوزان he mentioned when سعيد بن جبير he asked what led you to do this he said, this is a benefit that the Salaf, they would ask for proof for what people used to do and what people used to say. To ask for proof to substantiate the madhab, a position as it relates to a school of jurisprudence or other than that, to ask for a proof as it relates to a scholarly conclusion. To ask for the proof of someone who states something and likewise does something. It is requested from them a proof to establish the permissibility of that thing or that it is legislated from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet. This is the etiquette and the behavior of the Salaf. That they would not embrace anything illa bi dalil unless there was a proof. From the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu fi umur al-ilaj. Especially as it relates to medicine and treatment. Because in the area of medicine or treatment, remedies, لِأَنَّ nafus, the soul, it attaches itself to anything to seek a remedy or a cure. 
even if that thing is not legislated for some people. So Sa'id ibn Jubayr rahimahullah khashya min hadha al-amar fahada fihi anna al-ilaj la yakun illa bima dalla alayhi dalil min kitab Allah wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Sa'id ibn Jubayr feared this. This is a proof that treatment should only be with that which is established in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sheikh al-Fawzan, he closed by saying, as for going, amma al-dhahab, as for going to the Dajjalin, the lions and the magicians, and the people of misguidance, then this is haram, this is forbidden. That is why, Ikhwan, you don't go to a person you don't know the aqidah for ruqya. You don't allow someone that is majhul indak because you don't know is that person a person of tawheed or are they a magician? <coughs> because you have individuals like a Sheikh Al Fawzan, وَقَدْ يَكُونْ شِرْكًا أَكْبَرْ يُخْرِجْ صَاحِبُ مِنَ الْمِلَّةِ Some people they treat people with things that are major shirk that causes the individual to leave Al Islam. Like for example, إِذَا ذَبَحَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ If they sacrifice to other than Allah, أو دع غير الله أو they supplicate other than Allah أو استغاث بالجن والشياطين أو they seek rescue from the devils and the shayateen and the jinn they seek rescue from the jinn and the devils فإنه يخرج من الملة this person that does these things they leave al Islam he said ولو فرضنا أنه شفي even if a person is cured even if a person is cured and again, that could be from the shayateen, the devils. Maybe the original ailment from, was from the devil. And because now that individual fell into something that took them outside the fold of Islam, the devil leaves off his trickery. Billah. And Sheikh Al Fawzan said, Mada yan fa'wada dhahabat aqidatu wa sahha jismu. He said, What's going to benefit this individual if his belief departs him? If his belief leaves him, but his body is healthy. Meaning, it's better, Ikhwan, that somebody be sick upon Tawheed rather than to be healthy upon Shirk and to die upon that way. May Allah protect us from that. And that is an encouragement for us, brothers and sisters. Yes, those brothers and those sisters that want to get fit and exercise, do not leave your religion to get fit. Get fit and utilize that to worship Allah as He commanded us. Because some people they partake in these fitness groups and in these activities and they forget about what is permissible and impermissible. وَالْعِيَادُ billah. What benefit is fitness if now you lose part of your uprightness? Rather a person should try to be fit and that fitness aids you to fear Allah as he deserves to be feared. The Sheikh said, وَهَذَا أَمْرٌ وَبَابٌ خَطِيرٌ جِدًّا وَيَجِبَ التَّحَرُّزْ مِنْهُ Sheikh Al-Fawzani said, this is a very serious issue. And it's obligatory that we be cautious and careful concerning it. Look, Ikhwan, the Salaf, they never used to get angry. Some people, you say to them, what's the delil for that? They say, how can you ask me for the delil? Anyone who gets angry for being asked for the delil is suspect. Anyone who gets upset for being asked for a proof for what they are saying or what they are doing is suspect. Alamat istifham. Put a question mark over their head. Ishtaghdab. Why are you angry? Look, Saeed ibn Jubayri said, فَمَا حَمَلَكَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ What caused you to do that? Husayn ibn Abd Rahman, he didn't get angry. What did he say? He said, حَدِيثٌ حَدَّثَنَاهُ الشَّعْبِي A hadith that was narrated to us by Sha'bi. Now, this is my proof. Hakada, the Salaf. This is how the Salaf were. This is how Ahlul Hadith are. This is how the Salaf Yun are. Adilla, proofs and evidences. He said, حَدِيثٌ حَدَّثَنَاهُ الشَّعْبِي So then Sa'id ibn Jubayr, he, he asked further. He said, وَمَا حَدَّثَكُمْ What did he narrate to you? 
So this is the proof for Hussein ibn Abdul Rahman. This is his delil. He said, I said, Qultu haddathana an Buraydata ibn al Hussein. Shabi narrated to us from Buraydah ibn al Hussein, meaning that companion. And here, this narration is mentioned. What type of narration is this, Ikhwan? Buraydah ibn al Hussein is a companion, Sahabi, radiallahu an. So therefore, this narration is what? What type of narration is it? Yasir. Huh? Mawquf, ahsant. Yes, mawquf. That which stops at the companion is known as being mawquf. In this version, it is mentioned mawquf. And however, we find that this is also narrated marfu'an from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is also narrated marfu'an. And Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah declared it, the hadith in the marfu' form from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be authentic. So he said that Sha'bi narrated to us from the companion Buraid ibn al-Husayn that he said, there is no ruqya la ruqyata illa min ayn aw huma. There is no ruqya except for the evil eye and for a poisonous sting. And the scholars, they explain this to me, brothers and sisters, the scholars, they explain this to me, la ruqya ya'ni anfa' wa ashfa Illa min ayn. There is no ruqya more beneficial, no more efficient than ruqya that is performed for the evil eye or ruqya that is performed for a poisonous sting. And as Shaykh al-Fawzani explains, Ikhwan, in more detail, the evil eye. But we'll leave that inshallah ta'ala so that we can finish this hadith in this level, in this lesson. We'll leave that for now so that we can finish this hadith in this lesson. And those of you who have I'anatul mustafid, alhamdulillah, the Sheikh goes into more detail about the evil eye. So when Sa'id ibn Jubayri heard this hadith, which was the proof that Hussein ibn Abdul Rahman relied upon, he said, Qad ahsana man intaha ila ma sami'a. Surely, the one who has acted upon what he has heard has done well. So he praised him. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ مِثْلَ بَعْدِ الْجُهَالَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا بَلَغَهُمُ الْحَدِيثُ وَهُوَ لَا يُوَافِقُ هَوَاهُمْ أَوْ لَا يُوَافِقُ مَذْهَبَهُمْ رَاحُوا يَتْعَنُونَ فِيهِ أَكْبَرَ الطَّعْنِ وَيُجَرِّحُونَ وَلَوْ كَانَ الْحَدِيثِ فِي الْبُخَارِ فَإِنَّهُمْ قَالُوا فِي أَحَدِيث في البخاري حتى ولو قالها الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم فإن معناها ليس بصحيح عندهم قال ذلك بعد الكتاب فهذا أمر خطير الشيخ الفوزان said سعيد بن جبير he did not behave like some of the ignorant people they say if a hadith reaches them that does not agree with their designs or their madham the school of jurisprudence these individuals, they start to criticize the hadith and attack it in the greatest way. And they condemn the hadith even if it's in Bukhari. Because you find from amongst the people of misguidance, they say about a hadith that in Bukhari, even if the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said this, the meaning is not correct. Man ant. They say even if the Prophet ﷺ said that, the meaning is not correct. These individuals, they give precedence to their intellect over the text. These individuals, they give precedence to their intellect over the text. Know that with Ahlul Sunnah, that individual is Dhal Mudil. They are misguided and they lead others astray. Regardless of what they have reached in terms of knowledge, Regardless of where they have graduated from or who they studied with, Barakallahu Fikum, those anyone who says the like of that is Dal Mudil. Ikhwan Ta'asub, blind following to schools of jurisprudence, has led some of those who blindly follow some of the schools of thought to even attack some of the companions, like for example Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. 
And they say, Abu Huraira, he didn't understand what he was narrating, Wal-Iyadu Billah. And you understand more? Look at Hawa. Look at desires, what it causes people to do. It causes Wal-Iyadu Billah, it's like rabies. We all know what a, how a dog behaves or an animal behaves that is called rabies. How a desire is like rabies. And it can affect in, in human beings. It affects human beings. And it results in these type of attitudes and behaviors. May Allah Azza protect us all from that. Sheikh al fawzan said some of the authors have mentioned things like this. And this is very dangerous. So Sa'id ibn Jubair, lama balaghu hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sa'id ibn Jubair, when the hadith reached him from the Messenger of Allah, he said, the one who implemented what they have heard has done well. This is the etiquette of the scholars, this is the etiquette of the companions, and their students, and all of the imams of the religion. يَتَأَدَّبُونَ مَعَ السُنَّةِ إِذَا بَلَغَتْهُمْ عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ They have the correct etiquette with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if he reaches them. Naam, this is the way of Ahl al-Sunnah, Ahl al-Hadith. They respect the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Sa'id ibn Jubayri said, وَلَكِنْ حَدَّثَنَا ibn Abbas. He said, however ibn Abbas narrated to us. So here, the meaning is, Sa'id ibn Jubayri, عنده دليل آخر, العمل به أحسن من العمل بحديث حسين ibn Abd Rahman. وَإِنْ كَانَ الْعَمَلِ بِحَدِيثِ حُسَيْنِ بِنْ عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَنِ حَسَنًا وَلَكِنْ هُنَاكَ حَسَنًا وَهُنَاكَ مَا هُوَ حَسَنًا مَا هُوَ أَحْسَنًا مِنْ فَأَرَادَ أَنْ يُرَقِّيَهُ مِنَ الْحَسَنِ إِلَى الْأَحْسَنِ Sheikh Al-Fawzan said the meaning of this is that Sa'id ibn Jubayr had another proof. He had another proof. Sa'id ibn Jubayr, he had another proof. Acting upon this proof that he knew was better than acting upon the hadith of Hussein ibn Abd Rahman. Even though acting upon the hadith of Hussein ibn Abd Rahman is good. However, you have that which is good and that which is better. Is that clear to everyone? You have something good and then you can even have something that's better than that. Meaning, something good and something that is better. So, Sa'id ibn Jubayr, rahimahullah ta'ala, he wanted to elevate Hussein ibn Abd Rahman from that which, which was good to that which was better. And he said, Haddathana ibn Abbas, and this is the start of the hadith. Ibn Abbas narrated to us. Ibn Abbas, he narrated to us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he said, Uridat alayya al umam the nations were displayed before me. And this is a miracle from the miracles of the Prophet ﷺ. That the nations, the previous nations were presented and displayed before him. And it's said that this occurred on the night of the ascension and night journey. And it is said other than that. But it happened. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَرَأَيْتُ nabi." I saw a Prophet, وَمَعَهُ rahd, And he had a small group with him. A rahd is a jama'ah, a small group, less than 10. So this means, لَمْ يَتَّبِعْهُ مِنْ أُمَّتِهِ No one followed him from his nation, except a group of people, and they were less than 10. وَبَقِيَةُ الْأُمَّةِ كَفَرُوا بِهِ And the rest of that nation, they disbelieved in him. Subhanallah, look at that. A prophet, and he had less than 10 followers. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَالنَّبِي وَمَعَهُ الرَّجُلُ وَالرَّجُلَانِ And a prophet, and he had one or two men with him. So that's even less than the first. A prophet... And he had one or two followers. And the rest of that nation, they refused to believe in Allah and His Messenger. And 
The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, and I saw a Prophet and he had no followers. Subhanallah al -Azim. Look at that. A Prophet wa laysa ma'ahu ahad. He didn't have any followers. As Sheikh al Fawzan he said, Fihi min al anbiya man kazzabahu qawmuhu kulluhum. From the Prophets, there were those who all of their nation rejected them. وَلَمْ يَتَّبِعْهُ أَحَدٌ And not one person followed them. فَهَادَ فِيهِ دَلِيلَ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ لَا يُحْتَجُّ بِالْكَثْرَةِ This is a proof that the majority is not a proof. It's not an evidence. That prophet was he the minority or the majority? He was the minority. وَالنَّبِي وَلَيْسَ مَعُهُ أَحَدٌ A prophet and he had no followers. That Prophet ﷺ was the minority, he was alone. The rest of that nation, they rejected him. Shaykh al Fawzani said, in this is a proof that the majority is not an evidence. The proof is that of those who are upon the truth. The haqq ma wafaq al haqq. The truth is that which is in agreement with the truth. Yes. The people of the truth, they may be few in number. This prophet, he was one. He didn't have any followers. No doubt he was upon the truth. Allah Azza wa sent him with his message. Those who opposed him, who were greater in numbers, they were upon falsehood and they were the majority. وَلَوْ كَانَ شَخْصًا وَاحِدًا فَمَنْ كَانَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ وَمَعَهُ دَلِيلٌ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةِ رَسُولِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَهَذَا هُوَ الَّذِي يُؤْخَذُ بِقَوْلِهِ وَيُقْتَدَ بِهِ Sheikh Al-Fusan said, even if it's one individual, whoever is upon the truth and they have evidence with them from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, this is the one that his statement is to be accepted and he is the one who is to be followed. Whoever opposes the proof, no consideration is given to him. Even if they're the majority. Allah said about Allah said about his messenger Nuh. Only a few believed along with him. Nuh was upon the truth. Allah said only a few believed with him. Likewise, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Subhana, wa in tuti akthar man fil ard yudilluk an sabilillah. If you were to follow the majority of those upon the earth, they will misguide you from the path of Allah. Iyatabiruna illa dhan. They only follow speculation, and they only have lies. Naam, look, Ikhwan, ahl al batil. A sign of the people of falsehood, or they have a speculation. Qil and qal, he said, she said. And all they have is lies and fabrications. They can't say Allah said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he said, the Sahaba they said, tabi'una illa dhan. All they follow is speculation. All they have is attacks. Bidha'atul muflis as shatam was sab. The ulama they say, the one who lacks anything, any proof, all they have is abuse and insults. And as I mentioned, faqidu shayla yu'ti, one who doesn't possess something can't give it. Naam. As Shaykh al Fawzan he said, fal kathra laysat hi al-dabit fi isabat al-haq. Large numbers is not the guideline, is not the crucial factor when it relates to attaining the truth. Or reaching the truth. No one is to be fooled by large numbers. It is possible the majority are upon falsehood. And this is an important point, brothers and sisters. If you have, as Sheikh Al Fawzani said, a large number of people or the majority upon the truth, then this is good. This is good. Now, when we see large numbers of people upon Tawheed and Sunnah, this is good. Hada Tayyib, 
And we should thank Allah Azza wa for that. We should thank Allah for that. Because look, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look at the large numbers of his nation. Now he said, and I looked and I saw a large number of people. Now, this, this nation, the nation of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, now, so a large number of people, the majority upon the truth, we should thank Allah Azza wa Jalla. No, you know, insane person should come now and use this, you know, and say, you, I'm, and they're known to be reckless and they're known to be chaotic and people of chaos, and they say, yes, I'm alone, I'm on the truth because I'm the minority. And they're upon falsehood because they are the majority. No, that's not what it means. You know, because you have some people that have lost their intellect using these type of arguments. No. If we have people that we see large numbers, the majority upon Quran, Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf, then we thank Allah Azza wa Jal. We thank Allah Azza wa Jal and we ask Allah for firmness and we ask Allah to protect us from fitan. Because even some of the Salaf, they used to say, between us and them are the Janais. Between us and them are the funeral prayers. Meaning, large numbers of people that used to attend the funeral prayers of the Imams of the Sunnah. In opposition to the people of innovation, they were only attended by small groups of people. So we have to understand this correctly. The people of Sunnah, Ikhwan, are not people of chaos. The people of Sunnah are people, alhamdulillah, that love unity upon what is correct. They're not people that love to destroy because some people, that's all they can do. Because destroying is easy. Building is hard. <clears throat> destroying is easy. Anyone can destroy. You give a child, you know, a crane, he can knock down a house. It doesn't, you just switch the button. It doesn't need a lot of delicacy. But how many people can build? As Sheikh Al-Fawzani is said, أَمَّا إِذَا كَانَتْ كَثْرَةً بِدُونْ حَقْفَلَةً as for the large numbers or the majority without the truth, then this is irrelevant. And small numbers of people on the truth should not cause us to abstain from the truth. Fadil ibn Iyad, he said it, rahimahullah. Inshallah, we'll mention it after the adhan, inshallah. Naam, does anyone know the statement of Al-Fadil, rahimahullah? Tafadhal. لا نو تفضل لا anyone else فضيل رحمه الله تعالى يس سي عليك بطريق الحق it is upon you to stick to the true path it is upon you to stick to the true path meaning the path of the book and the sunnah with understanding of the companions ولا تستوحش لقلة السالكين and do not feel lonely because of the small numbers of those who are walking upon it. Don't feel lonely. If you find that there are a small number of people on it, don't feel lonely. And yes, you shouldn't feel lonely because Allah Azza wa Jalla informs us in the Quran, brothers and sisters, that whoever obeys Allah and his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then the, in the Akhirah, in the hereafter, they will be with the prophets. They will be with the prophets. Likewise, the martyrs, the truthful and the righteous. So a person shouldn't feel lonely. وَإِيَّاكَ وَطَرِيقِ الْبَاطِلِ Beware of the path of falsehood. وَلَا تَغْتَرَّ بِكَثْرَةِ الْهَالِكِينَ And do not be deluded and deceived by the large number of people that are walking upon it to be destroyed. May Allah protect us from that. Do not be deceived by the large number of people that are going to be destroyed. Or the large number of people that are destroyed. Naam. And Shaykh al-Fazani mentioned, Ikhwan, he said, لِأَنَّ بَعْضَ النَّاسَ الْيَوْمِ إِذَا نُبِّهَا لَخَطَ يَقُولُ Because he says, some people today, they say, when they are, when an error is pointed out to them, they say, هَذَا عَلَيْهِ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ This is what the majority of the people are upon. إِذَا قُلْتَ مَثَلًا إِذَا قُلْتَ لَهُ مَثَلًا If you say to them, for example, أَن تَحْرِيم تَأْوِيلِ الصِّفَاتِ If you mention to them the prohibition of distorting the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. They say nine-tenths of the world are upon the way of the Asha'ira. So they say 90% of the world are upon the way of the Asha'ira. And the Asha'ira, you are willing a sifat. And the Asha'ira, they misinterpret the sifat or they explain away the sifat. 
Shaykh al Fawzan said, That's not an excuse before Allah. Azza wa Jal. That's not an excuse before Allah. Azza wa Jal. Madam tabayin al haqq. As long as the truth has become clear. And we'll start with that point. Now, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذْ رُفِعْ عَلِي سَوَادٌ عَظِيمٌ A large number of people were displayed and presented before me. He said, and I thought that that was my nation. And it was said to me, this is Musa and his people. Alayhi salatu was salam. Showing us the excellence of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and I looked and I saw a large group of people. And it was said to me, this is your nation. And with them are 70,000 people who will enter paradise without any reckoning, without any punishment. Ikhwan, these individuals, 70,000, as we know, they are those who perfected at Tawheed. The 70,000 are those who perfected at Tawheed. And there comes in another hadith because somebody may say, is it only 70,000? So, is there only 70,000? Is there any more? هَلْ نُحَدِّدِ الْعَدَدْ بِسَبْعِينَ ألف. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, 70,000 people from this nation and with them, the Prophet وسلم, he said, with them, there are 70,000 from this nation that will enter paradise without any reckoning and without any punishment. Is it only 70,000? Tafaddal, ya Abu Bakr. Who has the proof? Naam, there's a hadith collected by Ahmad. There is a hadith collected by Imam Ahmad and others, and as Sheikh Al-Albani rahimahullah mentioned it in a Sahih, he declared it to be authentic. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Wa'adani Rabbi, my Lord promised me, an yudkhil al-jannah, that he will enter into paradise min ummati sabi'ina alfa. My Lord promised me that he will enter into paradise 70,000 from my nation. Bighayri hisab wa adab, without any reckoning, and without any punishment. Ma'akulli alfin sabauna alfa. And with every thousand, there are 70,000. So how many in, to in total, without screaming out? So I repeat it. The Prophet wasallam said, with every thousand, there are 70,000. Huh? Ma'akulli alfin sabauna alfa. Nasruddin. 4.9 million. I heard some funny numbers from some of the brothers. <laughs> no, that's billion, brother, that you got in your calculator. Yeah, this brother has 4.9 billion. That's what I got, too. Huh? That's what I have. You said billion? Yeah. La, Tfadda Dawood. 490 million. Because 70,000 times 7,000. That's not what I came with. <laughs> Fadal, the brother at the back with his hand up. It's Biru, quiet, too much noise. Ijlis, no, the Prophet وسلم, said there will be 70,000 from this nation that will enter paradise without any reckoning and without any punishment. And he said, Ma'akulli alf, with every thousand, Sab'una alfa, there are 70,000. We need maths classes, I see. <laughs> Arithmetic. See the importance of maths? That's why for the young brothers and the young sisters, mathematics is important. Mathematics is important. Hisab, mathematics is important. As it relates to things like this, mirath, inheritance, and zakat, and other than that. Arithmetic, maths is important. Don't let anyone tell you it's not important. Even for the religion. Every 1,000, uh, they will have another 70,000, yeah? Tayyib. So we have 70 parts, uh, which is 1,000 in every part, yeah? So we have 70 parts. 
and every pot will um, they will take seventy thousand with them. Okay, yeah. so what's your what, what's your conclusion? So it's like uh, four million, uh, four million, four and nine million, and seventy thousand. Uh, so he says four point nine million plus seventy thousand, so four million nine hundred and seventy thousand. Who agrees with him? Mashallah. No. Tfadl. He has 49 million. This is interesting. Tfadl. 4,900,000, which is similar to him. He's, he added the 70,000. I'll leave it to you, inshallah, to go away and work out. Naam. So, inshallah, I'll leave it to you. But ala kullin, the Prophet sallallahu said, and with 70,000 will enter this a paradise without any reckoning from this nation and without any punishment. And he said, with every thousand, there are 70,000. So as the brother he mentioned, it's simple. He said, with every thousand, there are 70,000. So how many thousands in 70,000? 70. So therefore, 70 times? Barakallahu Plus the 70,000. Yes, if you want to add the 70,000. So do you see how we get there? Barakallahu Feekum. See the beauty of the religion? Even we're doing mathematics. Allahu Akbar. Kitab <laughs> Tawheed. Ma ajmala. Naam. So Sheikh Al Fawzan he said, This shows the virtues of these 70,000. Naam. As Sab'una Alf. Ha'ula min ummati Muhammadin. Yadhulun al Jannah bila hisab wa la ada. 70,000 from the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will enter paradise without any reckoning, without any punishment. This is an amazing virtue. The rest of the creation, they will be brought to account. Some of them will have a light account. Some of them, Allah, will have a severe reckoning. Then it's mentioned in the narration, وَدَخَلَ manzila. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he entered his house. The Prophet وسلم, he stood up and he entered his house. And he didn't clarify who are the 70,000 people exactly. So the Prophet وسلم, mentioned the 70,000 and then he went into his house. The companions were greatly concerned about this. This is something of magnificent, magnificent importance. So they started to debate, you know, they discuss is a better word, they started to discuss who are the 70,000. The people start, the companions started to discuss who are these 70,000. They started to research. This shows the dedication and desire of the companions for good and that they were concerned with the matters of the akhirah in opposition to those who are only concerned about the dunya yes yeah, some people all they talk about is dunya after a while you say subhanallah nothing else except dunya the, com the companions naam they were concerned about good and the greatest good ikhwan is jannah and to enter paradise without any reckoning and any punishment. So they were concerned about that. Because they focus on the akhirah. In opposition to the people of the dunya, who only focus on the dunya. The companions concerned themselves with the affairs of the hereafter. The people of this world who are attached to this world, in opposition to the people that are attached to this world, they only talk about it and they are not concerned about the affairs of the hereafter. And again, Ikhwan, this shows, highlights for us the importance of researching as it relates to knowledge. Mubahatha, people researching. Because if we want to arrive at the truth, we research. Nabhath. We may disagree, but how do we get together? Look, we all want the truth. What do we do? We research. Ta'al, let's, let's research. Let's read the books of the Salaf. Let's read the Quran with the tafsir of the classical scholars, the ahadith with the classical interpretation, the aqidah, the way of the belief of the Salaf and the way of the Salaf. Let's research it. In opposition to those in this time, they don't want to research except those who Allah has mercy upon them. Or they're not going to, they use excuses, they're not going to listen to me. Ya did you research? 
The, some of the scholars, they said, Baynana wa baynakum. Between us and you is the book of Allah, the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With the understanding of the Sahaba, between us and you is the books of the Salaf. Between us and you are the books of the Salaf. Researching to arrive at what is correct. Because disagreement may arise. You may have an opinion, I may have an opinion. However, let's research to arrive at the haqq. But people who don't want the truth, they create smoke screens. They talk about everything else except the issue. No, talk about the issue. You attack that scholar, address that. Don't create a smoke screen or a straw man argument. Barakallahu feekum. So the companions, they started to discuss it. فَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ Some of them said, لَعَلُّمَ الَّذِينَ صَحِبُوا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. Perhaps those 70,000, they are those who accompanied the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم from the companions. لَأَنَّ أَفْضَلِ الْأُمَّ هُمَ الصَّحَابَةُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ لَا أَحَدْ يُسَاوِ الصَّحَابَ فِي الْفَضِيلَةِ Because the best of this nation are the companions. And no one is equal to the companions in terms of virtue. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the authentic hadith, La tasubbu ashabi, do not abuse, do not insult my companions. Fawalladhi nafsi biyadih, law anfaqa ahadukum mithla uhudin dahaba, ma balaga mudda ahadihim wala nasifah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, by the one whom my soul is in his hand, if you spend uhud in gold, you would not reach a handful of one of them. No half of that. The companions are the best of this nation. No one is equal to them in virtue. No one is equal to them in terms of virtue. Because they were the first to embrace an Islam. Likewise, due to them sacrificing their own selves and their wealth in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. So that is why some of the companions concluded Perhaps this is referring to those who accompanied the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the companions. وَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ Some of them said about the 70,000 لَعَلَّهُمَ الَّذِينَ وُلِدُوا فِي الْإِسْلَامِ فَلَمْ يُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا Perhaps they were those who were born in Islam and never associated partners with Allah. Meaning, perhaps this is referring to those who were born after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent from the children of the Muslims who remained upon the correct fitrah, innate disposition, and believed in Allah and His Messenger, and they never associated partners with Allah Azza wa Jal. This shows the excellence of those who did not associate partners with Allah Azza wa Jal. And Ikhwan al Shaykh al Fawzani said, بِحَيْثُ أَنَّ الصَّحَابَ تَوَقَّعُوا أَنَّهُمْ هُمَ الَّذِينَ يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ بِلَا حِسَابِ وَلَا عَذَابِ Because the companions, some of them, they thought that they would, these individuals, those who are born in Islam and never associated partners with Allah, they thought that they were going to be the ones who were to enter paradise without any reckoning, without any punishment. This shows the excellence of the one who is free of shirk. However, وَلَكِنْ مَنْ وَقَعَ فِي الشِّرْكِ ثُمَّ تَاب تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَصَارَ فِي أَفْضَلِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ لِأَنَّ التَّوْبَةَ تَجُبُ مَا قَبْلَهَا Shaykh Al-Fawzan mentions an important point. He said, however, whoever falls into shirk and then repents, Allah will accept their repentance. And they will become from the best of the Muslims. Because repentance wipes that which came before it. Naham. ثُمَّ خَرَجَ عَلَيْهِمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَأَخْبَرُوا then the Prophet وسلم, he went out to them, meaning the companions, and he told them. Uh, they told the Prophet وسلم, of what was discussed. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he went out to the companions and they informed the Messenger of Allah وسلم, of their discussions. And Shaykh al Fawzani mentions in this is a proof that it's legislated to research issues of knowledge and to research. For the meaning of the speech of Allah and His Messenger وسلم, so that we can implement it correctly and benefit from it. فقال, the Prophet وسلم, he informed the companions about the 70,000. Now he's going to tell us who they are. He said, They are those who do not ask for ruqya to be performed upon them. They do not cauterize their bodies. They do not believe in omens. 
رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And they place their trust in their Lord. Sheikh Al-Fawzani said, هُمَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَسْتَرْقُونَ They are those who do not ask for Ruqya to be performed upon them, meaning أي لَا يَطْرِبُونَ مِنْ غَيْرِهِمْ أَنْ يَرْقِيَهُمْ لِمَادَ They do not ask for others to make Ruqya upon them. Why is that? لِأَنَّ الطَّلَبَ الرُّقْيَ مِنَ النَّاسِ سُؤَالِ الْمَخْلُوقِ وَالسُؤَالِ الْمَخْلُوقِ فِيهِ ذِلَّةِ فَمْ يَسْتَغْنُونَ عَنِ النَّاسِ So Sheikh Al-Fawzani explained this. He said they do not ask the people to make Ruqya upon them. Why? Because asking the people, the creation, to make Ruqya upon you, it is asking the creation. It is asking the creation. And these individuals who refrain from that, they refrain from having any need of the people. And they place their trust in Allah Azza wa Jalla. And this is from the perfection of a tawheed. This is from the perfection of a tawheed. Likewise, Ikhwan, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, They do not perform cauterization on their bodies. They do not perform cauterization. And Ikhwan, a person may be a bit confused by this. A person may be a bit confused by this. And cauterization, as we know, is when a person uses the fire, uses fire for treatment. No doubt there are issues that arise when we look at this hadith. Because in some ahadith, we have that the Prophet وسلم, he allowed cauterization. Naam. In some ahadith we have like here, the Prophet ﷺ encouraged that it should be abandoned. So the scholars, how do they gather between these ahadith? A Sheikh ibn Ubaz, he reaches a conclusion, his position, and there are other positions. A Sheikh ibn Ubaz says that this is huma ladina la yastarqoon, they don't ask for ruqya when there's no extreme need for that. They don't cauterize their bodies when there is no extreme need for that. However, he mentions specifically a Sheikh Ibn Ubaz, and you can find it on his website. He said, لَكِنْ إِذَا دَعَتِ الْحَاجَةَ لَا بَأْسْ وَلَا يُخْرِجُوا ذَلِكْ إِذَا دَعَتِ الْحَاجَةَ عَنِ السَّبْعِينَ He said, if there is an extreme need, if there is an extreme need to ask for ruqya, for example, like, for example, Ikhwan, a person, they are suffering from magic and they can't, they, they're, they're unable to make ruqya upon themselves for some reason. He said if there is an extreme need, then there's nothing wrong with that and it does not remove them from the 70,000 people. Is that clear, Ikhwan? Naam. That's the position of a Sheikh ibn Ubaz, rahimahullah ta'ala. Gathering between the various ahadith on this matter. Naam, if there is no extreme need, a person, yes, you make ruqya upon yourself. Because that is from the perfection of a tawheed. Because asking someone to make ruqya upon you is a type of humility. Naam, before the creation. Wal-iyadu billah. And you're asking the creation. Whereas you should make ruqya for yourself. You can recite Fatiha upon yourself. You can recite Ayatul Kursi upon yourself. You can recite... Surah Al-Ikhlas, Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Nas, Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq. Majority of the Muslims can recite that on themselves. So if a, a person, yes, should stay away from asking others, you can make ruqya upon yourself. Naam, is that clear? Naam. Likewise, cauterization, if there was an extreme need, hajj shadeed, naam, then the Shaykh ibn Abbas said, la bas, it won't remove them from the 70,000 people. However, somebody, in, in the time of Al-Jahiliyyah, some of them, they used to turn to cauterization like it was going to cure everything. And that's not correct. Naam. وَلَا يَتَطَيَّرُونَ They do not, nor, nor do they believe in omens. Nor do they believe in omens. هُوَ التَّشَاءٌ بِالطُّيُورِ وَغَيْرِهَا And this is going to come later on, the issue of التَّطَيِّر uh, the, the prohibited belief in omens. As Sheikh Al-Fawzan said, the belief in omens is having bad thoughts due to, the, due to the flight patterns of birds 
or other than this. And if this person sees what he considers a bad omen, then they leave off what they intended to do. Amat tafa'ul. As for optimism, that's legislated. And this is important, Ikhwan. Optimism is legislated. The Prophet he used to like optimism. Optimism is having a good thought about Allah. Yes, don't be pessimistic. Some people always negative, negative, negative. Have a good thoughts about Allah Azza wa Jal. As for the belief in omens, it's having bad thoughts about Allah Azza wa Jal. These individuals, Ikhwan, these 70,000 people, as Shaykh Al-Fawzani said, they deserve this lofty station entering paradise without any reckoning because they abandoned things which were forbidden, which is the omens, the belief in omens, and they abandoned things which are disliked, asking someone to perform ruqya and cauterization. They abandoned these things because they had no need of the people and they placed their trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. The Shaykh said, as for a person performing ruqya upon himself, as for a person performing ruqya upon himself or performing ruqya upon someone else without them asking, the Prophet he did this he performed ruqya upon himself and he performed ruqya upon others. And there's no dislike in this. Then there, re then there remains the issue, Ikhwan, of treating oneself with lawful medicine. Like, for example, pills that the doctor prescribes, or herbal remedies, or operations. And the Sheikh mentions other things. He said, This is allowed. And there's no dislike in this because the Prophet وسلم, he said, Tadawu wala tadawu bi haram. Treat yourself. Treat yourself, but not, do not treat yourself with that, with that which is forbidden. So look, the Prophet وسلم, commanded with treatment. As Shaykh al Fusan said, Min al -ulama man yara anna mustahab. Some of the scholars they considered treatment through medicine recommended. Some of them some of them considered it to be an obligation. And the Sheikh said, treatment, whether it's allowed or recommended or obligatory, it does not negate placing one's trust in Allah as some of the ignorant they claim. Some of the ignorant people they say, don't treat yourself. Don't treat yourself with medicine. Don't have an operation. Place your trust in Allah. He said, we say to them, Al-Akhd bil asbab la yunafi tawakkul. Taking the permitted means doesn't oppose tawakkul. Is that clear to everyone? Now, this is allowed. Person needs an operation, they have an operation. That's a permitted means. Naam. What tadawi sabab? Treating oneself with medicine or herbal remedies, it is a means. And taking the means is something Allah commanded with. Naam. Then it's mentioned in the narration, فَقَامَ عُكَّاشَ ibn Mihsan. Ukasha stood up and he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, supplicate to Allah to make me from them, meaning the 70,000. As Shaykh Al-Fawzani mentioned, brothers and sisters, this shows that it is legislated to ask the people of good to make dua for you if they are alive. بِشَرْطْ أَنْ يَكُونْ حَيًّا حَاضِرًا They are alive and you can ask them directly. This is a proof that you can ask the people of good, the righteous, to make dua for you with the condition that they're living. Because this companion Because this noble companion asked the Prophet to make dua to Allah for him and the Prophet affirmed this. Prophet did not correct this. وَلَا يَجُوزُ تَأْخِيرُ الْبَيَانَ عَنْ وَقْتِ الْحَاجَةِ The Prophet ﷺ would not delay the clarification if it was needed. This shows that it was allowed. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَنْتَ مِنْهُمْ He said to Ukasha, you are from amongst the 70,000. And as the Prophet informed brothers and sisters, it occurred because Ukasha, 
He was killed as a martyr, radiallahu anhu. He was killed as a martyr. May Allah Azza be pleased with him. And that shows Ikhwan again, that's a proof of the Prophet of the Prophet The Prophet said, you're from them to Ukasha. Ukasha was martyred. That virtuous companion who witnessed Badr. And other than that, with the Messenger of Allah he was martyred. Then another man stood up and he said to the Prophet supplicate to Allah for Allah to make me from them. The Prophet said, Ukasha beat you to it. Allahu Akbar. This shows, brothers and sisters, the etiquette of the Prophet. The etiquette of the Prophet. Some of the scholars they say that the Prophet didn't want to open this door for everyone. Sheikh Al Fawzani's opinion was he adopted the position that Sheikh Al Fawzan he took the position, he said. It is as if the Prophet وسلم, he knew that this man did not reach this station. However, the Prophet وسلم, did not want to encounter this man with speech that the man would dislike. He didn't say to him, you don't deserve that. Or you are not from them. And this is from the excellent, excellent mannerisms of the Prophet وسلم. Rather, he, the Prophet mentioned a statement that would not hurt the man's feelings. He said, Ukasha beat you to it. And the ulama, they say, Shaykh al-Islam, mentioned in the benefits of this chapter, isti'mal al-ma'arid. What's the meaning of ma'arid in English? What's the meaning of ma'arid? That it's permissible to use ma'arid. The means to cure? Huh? Like the means to cure something? No. What's the meaning of ma'arid? We've dealt with this before. Isti'mal al ma'arid. Huh? A what? No. You're going for the literal one, you're ba'id. Kul al ba'id. Tfaddal. Double entendre. A double what? Entendre. Entendre. Naam, a double entendre. Mean, what does that mean? It's a statement or a word that when you say it, it can be understood in two ways. So it can be understood in two ways. Double entendre. Ma'arid. Isti'mal al ma'arid. In English, a double entendre. And I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> Again, look, alhamdulillah, even istafadna lughat al ingliziyya, alhamdulillah. Na'am, barakallahu feekum. Alhamdulillah, with that, ikhwan. Uh, Muhammad inshallah will read the Masail al-Bab when we finish that chapter and the next chapter inshallah Bab al-Khawfi min al-Shirk the fear of al-Shirk Naam, tafaddal Bismillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah page number 48 Issues of the chapter number one regarding Tawheed people are classified into various ranks Number two, the meaning of purification of Tawheed. Number three, Ibrahim السلام, was praised by Allah, but he was not of the polytheists. Number four, Allah praised all those awliya, for they did not make anyone with him as partners. A, they did not practice polytheism. Number five, keeping away from cauterization of Rukya is the fullest purification of Tawheed. Number six, Possessing these characteristics. Now, keeping away, Ikhwan, that has to be understood. Ish, kayf tarjamahu? Anyone have the Arabic for the Masail al Bab? In Sheikh al Fawzan, it doesn't mention uh, in I'ana, Masail al Bab. Anybody have the the mutton, the text? In the mutton? Hat. What's that there? What's, what book is that? اقرأ العربية لما قاله رقم المسألة الخامس It doesn't mean that you leave Rukia performing Rukia upon yourself It doesn't mean that It means that you don't ask anyone for Rukia نعم Is that clear to everyone? Because performing Rukia upon yourself is allowed if performing ruqya upon someone else 
Naam, if they didn't ask you, it's allowed. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he performed ruqya upon himself and he performed ruqya upon others. So it doesn't, that doesn't mean, Naam, that you abandon ruqya that is legislated. What it means from the perfection of Tawheed is that you stay away from asking someone to make ruqya on you. Is that clear to everyone? Yeah. Naam, likewise, you stay away from cauterization, yes. That's from, from the perfection of a Tawheed. Unless, as a Sheikh Ibn Ubaz mentioned, there is a severe need for that. Is that clear to everyone? Yeah. Naam, tafadl. Number six, possessing these characteristics, these traits, is from At-Tawakul, trusting in Allah alone. Number seven, the deep knowledge of the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who knew that such a degree of trust of Tawakul in Allah could not be attained without action. Number eight, this shows how eager the companions... Naam, ikhwan, what does that mean? That means, look, subhanAllah, the Sahaba, the companions, they understood that a tawakkul nam, placing one's trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, in, with, in addition to that, actions. Not, you know, claiming tawakkul with our actions, no. Look, the companions, they mentioned, when they concluded who were the 70,000, they said, may, perhaps they are those who accompany the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning from the companions, actions, sahaba. They said likewise, perhaps some of them said, Perhaps they were those who were born in Islam and they never associate partners with Allah. So actions, meaning they, act, they perfected Tawheed and they stayed away from Shirk. So Nam, the companions understood to attain this level, there has to be actions. Nam. Number eight, this shows how eager the companions were in doing the deeds. Number nine, the superiority of the, of the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam quantitatively as well as qualitatively. Number 10, the superiority of the Ummah, followers of Musa salam. Number 11, all of the Ummah of the nations will be paraded before the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Number 12, every Ummah nation will be accompanied by a respected Prophet. Number 13, generally few people responded to the call of the Prophets. Number 14, the Prophets whom nobody responded to will come alone before Allah. Number 15, the substance of these facts is that man should not worry about numbers, neither must he feel proud about huge numbers, nor be disheartened by few numbers. Number 16. Naam, هذا الله فيكم. That shows the importance of learning. If you know you're upon the haqq, if you know with certainty you're upon what Allah said, you're upon what the Prophet wasallam said, with the understanding of the Sahaba, Naam, nobody can move you or sway you. You're upon Tawheed, alhamdulillah. Any shubha that the people of shirk they bring, it can't affect you. You're upon sunnah and you abandon bid'ah. Any proof or argument that the people of innovation they bring, it can't sway you. Because you're certain that you're upon the truth. Now, that doesn't mean that a person becomes arrogant. La. Rather, still we fear for ourselves because for inna al tu'man alayhi al-fitna. The one who is living is not free from being trial. May Allah protect all of us. And we know that the Prophet وسلم, would frequently say, Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O changer of hearts, make my heart firm upon your religion now. Number 16. The, per the permission for using ruqya to treat the evil eye and poisonous things. Number 17. By the hadith, he has done well by stopping what he has heard, the depth of knowledge of the predecessors in knowledge, or is known. And it's also known that the first hadith does not contradict the second. Number 18. The avoidance of the predecessors in praising anyone undeservingly. Number 19. The Prophet. Now, Ikhwan, also, that's an important point as well. Just, it's a side point, not directly related to it. A person can have ghulu in madh. Some people, they exaggerate in their praise. And sometimes exaggerating in your praise, Nam, or going beyond bounds in your praise is dispraiseworthy as well. Likewise, you can go to extremes in criticism. For example, somebody asks you about marriage. What do you say about marrying? The guardian comes to you and says, what do you say about such and such a brother? And you know that that brother, Nam, is a person that oppresses his wives. You know that. Ma'roof. Not with done, not with speculation. You know with certainty. But you say that brother is an excellent brother. He has excellent character and so on and so forth. That's shahada to zul. That's false testimony. So that praise is, con is condemned in the light of Sharia. People, they think you can only go to ghulu 
in terms of criticism. No, you can also exaggerate in terms of praise. Rather, that which is the best is that which is in the middle. Meaning that which is correct in light of the guidelines of the kitab and the sunnah. Naam. Number 19. The Prophet statement that you are one of them is a sign of prophethood. Number 20, the excellence of Rukasha. Number 21, using Ma'adir to mention something casually, amongst other things, or description open to various interpretations. Uh, he never translated Ma'adir? No. Yeah. Number 22, the excellence, the excellent manners of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, alhamdulillah, with that, Ikhwan, we finished, alhamdulillah, that chapter. باب من حقق التوحيد دخل الجنة بغير حساب ولا عذاب